All right, Shalom. And we start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachah Kodash, that will honor us to the apostles and others, great millstone, peace and mercy to the house of David. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Heavenly Father's only God and Son, who the world refers to as Jesus Christ, Bahasham, is in the name Rachah Kodash is the Holy Spirit. And also shout out to the 144,000 men that's laboring in this truth for the sake of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And shout out to the innumerable multitude, men, women, and children that may be listening in all truth and sincerely shout out. This is your brother Kodash coming back here with another video through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And the title of this video, Lord willing. Uh, you know, just going into, you know, not fretting evildoers. All right, that word fret goes into. Uh, uh, to worry or um, let me just pull it up right here. Uh, fret from the definitions of word word net. It says worry unnecessarily or excessively. Uh, be agitated or irritated. Okay, and let me pull a precept here. This is uh, Psalms 37, verse 1. Fret not thyself. It says a Psalm of David. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Okay, so we can't be uh, envious, you know, one of, trying to covet, you know, coveting the things that these uh, workers of iniquity have. You know, they have the... Uh, the diamonds, they have the nice cars, you know, even especially of our people, man, they, 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 they are committing uh sin, iniquity, sin on top of sin to get these other, to get these, you know, things that might be uh, pleasing unto the eyes. Okay. They're not serving the Lord and, and, uh, and, and, and uh, getting these things righteously, you know, uh, so scripture, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, you know, goods unjustly gotten, Uh, Khan just says this is. I'm, uh, let me pull both of these. This is Syrac or Ecclesiasticus, chapter forty and verse thirteen. It says the goods of the unjust shall be dried up like a river, and shall vanish with noise like a great thunder and rain. Okay. So these, the goods of the unjust shall be dried up like a river, man. Okay? And what's going to happen to all these people's goods, man? Okay? It's going to be burnt with, with thermonuclear missiles, man. All right? These people, nice cars, their drugs, okay, their houses, you know? All going to be burnt up thermonuclear missiles, man. And uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 5, verse 8. Ecclesiasticus or Syrac chapter 5, verse 8. It says, set not thine heart upon goods unjustly gotten, for they shall not profit thee in the day of calamity. Okay, so when all hell breaks loose, you know, these people's uh, cars, you know, gas, you know, how you going to work a car? No gas. Okay. You know, these people's uh, weapons, you know, they're going to try to use them in time of trouble. Okay. No bullets. Can't go to the store and, and uh, get their bullet and, and get their bullets. Okay, so all these things that these people set their heart upon on, okay, it's not going to profit them. Only thing that's going to profit you in a day of calamity, okay, is this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay, but these people they can't see, you know, they're not they're not thinking in that way. Okay, because because things are so easily gotten now. Okay, you know these people they 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 can still operate using their money. Okay, they're not worried about, you know, when the money collapsed because it ain't it ain't collapsed now. Okay, but the Lord slowly is uh, slowly but surely, you know, strategically, you know, breaking down Babylon, man. You know, the prices of diesel going up and what is that going to lead to? Okay, that's going to lead to food shortages. You're already seeing it now. Okay, these other truckers, they're not going to they're not going to be uh, traveling to, to transport these goods. Okay. 
and that goes with uh food uh material things okay everything operates off off, off this diesel man okay so with these prices going up okay you know, it's going to leave a uh, it's going to leave a shortage man but niggas out here they're not thinking about that you know they're just thinking about the now okay they have that mind frame of Esau that the house is going to prolong, you know, for generations to generations, man. Okay, but it's not going to be like that, man. Okay, that's why we can't can't worry ourselves, can't be agitated uh, from what these evildoers have, man. Okay, Esau, Edom. Okay, the wickedness of our people. We can't we can't worry about that, man. Okay, it says. Uh, Going back to Psalms. Psalms 37 and 1, it says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Okay? So we can't be envious, man. Okay? Wanting to be like them. Because their end is destruction, man. We got to think about our ending, man. We stay in this thing, Lord willing. Okay, our ending is going to be um, salvation. While these people are, are going to be, uh, they're going to be burnt up, man. Verse two. Psalms thirty-seven, verse two. It says, "It says, for they shall soon." be cut down they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb all right it's gonna be cut down man mold down so they on top now man okay but it's a time to uh abound and a time to abase these people are going to be brought low they're going to be abased lord willing we're going to be abounded we're going to be uh uh bought on high man put on high Verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Be not weary in well-doing. We have to trust in Yahweh Bashem It says, so thou, it says, so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily, and verily, which means truly, thou shalt be fed. So when the time of uh, these real food shortages come, we're going to be fed, Lord willing. Okay, because we trust in the names, uh, in the names of the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. We trust that he's going to feed, that he's going to feed his servants. It says that in uh, in the book of Isaiah. It says, "My servants." God, Isaiah sixty-five verse thirteen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, "Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold." My servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Okay, death is going to meet these uh, these niggas around every corner, man. Every corner they look, you know, death is going to be meeting them, man. Okay, the day of the, day of the Lord is terrible, all right? What it says, uh... Amos chapter 8, I mean chapter 5, verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. For To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand upon the wall and a serpent bit him, shall not the day of the Lord be, be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it? So all hell is, is going to be breaking loose here in America, man. And without the Lord, you will not survive, man. The Lord got a bounty on you. It's going to, it's going to capitalize, man. The Lord sent his death angel is going to capitalize, man. Why? Because the scripture says that the, uh, let me just pull it here. Because they hearken unto the, to the voice of the commandment, roughly paraphrasing. Uh, Psalms 103 and verse 20 says, bless ye Yahweh. Ba Shimei ye his angels that excel in strength, 
that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So these deaf angels, they're going to do the commandments of the Lord, man. They will not transgress. <laughs> That's another one that says not transgress. Con. Uh, Ecclesiastes or, or Sirach, chapter 39. I'm starting verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. These are going to be spirits created for vengeance out here upon two thirds of our people, man. Two thirds of you so called black, Spanish, and Native Americans. You're going to feel these curses, man. You may not feel them now because you're in your mirth. Okay, you may be living a living a so-called decent life here in your captivity. All right, but hey, just like a uh, young thug, man, his ass is grass right now, man. Feeling them curses, man. Two thirds of our people are gonna feel these curses. It says there be spirit that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In a time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of of him that made them. Fire and hail and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. See, punishing the wicked, man. These spirits gonna be created for vengeance in his, in these times to come. Already happening now. They verse thirty one. They shall rejoice. In his commandment, they're going to be glad to take you out, man. It says, and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word, man. That's 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 frightening, man. These, these deaf angels going to get busy out here, man. Will not transgress his word. They're going to rejoice like, yes, finally get to kill this nigga. They're going to put the wickedness out, man. Deaf angels, that's left-hand side, right-hand side, man. Both righteous at the end of the day when you understand the scriptures, man. All right, because they're not transgressing the word of the Heavenly Father. They're doing his command. So that means they're righteous. Doesn't matter if they're killing or they're delivering you, man. They're still doing the bidding of the Lord. And uh, let me jump here. Second Peter is chapter two. And uh, let me start at verse four. It says, for if, if the most high spare not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. You know, and that was us, you know, going back to Jude. Uh, let me just pull that real quick. Uh, Jude. Uh, verse six says, and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he have reserved an everlasting change on the darkness unto the judgment of, of the great day. All right, we're in these everlasting, we're in these uh, chains of darkness, okay, being in his flesh, okay? This is uh, 2 Peter 2, uh, verse 5, and spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of ungodly. All right, so the Lord, he just, he's, uh, he spared not the old world, man. Okay, so Babylon is going to be destroyed. Babylon is going to be destroyed, man. He he, he he didn't spare Sodom and Gomorrah, man. Okay, let's go say that in verse 6. It says, and turning the cities of Sodom, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly okay so all you people that's living ungodly you're going to get the same treatment you know as did Sodom and Gomorrah man okay as did uh, uh, the old world okay when Noah was preaching man they got the flood they got wiped away they got put out the same thing is going to happen to you to you two-thirds and you heathens, man. You're going to be put out. 
It says, and deliver just lot. Vex with the filthy conversation of the wicked, man. Okay? And we're vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, man. Okay? You know, we're in a we're in modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, and we're vexed, man. Okay, because a majority of these people are wicked. It says, For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing, we're we're seeing wickedness, we're we're hearing wicked wickedness, man. It says, vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds, man. All right? Hey, vex his righteous soul, man. So that's the same thing that's going on now. We're being vexed, you know, because we're we're seeing and we're hearing, you know, filthy things, man. It says, verse 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. See, the Lord know how to deliver the godly out of temptation. You know, so that's what the Lord is doing. The Lord is delivering us, delivering us daily, man, from these temptations, man. When these wicked holidays come up, man, okay, we're still, you know, it's, you know, it's like it's like a demon still trying to creep in you, you know, yeah, let me go ahead and celebrate Christmas. Let me buy my children some presents, man. Birthdays, you know, the Mother's Day, Father's Day, we're all, every every day we're we're going through temptation, but like the scripture just said, we, the, the Lord has the Lord has how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Okay, the scripture says, "Let no man say when he is tempted, he is tempted of the Lord." Okay, but it's, it's you, man. It's you when you're uh, drawn from your lust and enticed, man. Roughly paraphrasing. Okay, um, verse ten it says, "But but chiefly." Them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. You know, they despise order. It says, presumptuous are they self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, man. Okay, going to, they're not, they're not, they're not uh, afraid to speak evil against this truth. Okay, to speak evil against the Lord, man. You know, that's why the Lord is going to have to uh, put them to shame, man. The Lord is going to have to expose them. All right, because the Lord is the high, is the high, high and mighty, man. You know, these people think they tough and they uh, bad guy, man. The Lord is the real tough guy, man. He's going to show you, man. Scripture says, why, why is earth and ashes proud, man? You be beat into a powder. It's a powder dust, man. But these people think they're tough and proud, man. Uh, verse eleven. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not wail, railing accusation against them before the Lord. So even the angels don't even try you. How about Shemuel Shai? And they're more powerful, man. But you got these uh, pure mortals trying to act like they're tough, man. Ain't that something, man? Okay, but it says verse 12, but these as natural brew beasts made to be taken and destroyed. All right, the multitude created in vain, man. It says, speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, man. All right, hey, so uh, these are the people they got, they got what's coming to them, man. So we can't fret, fret these evildoers. I'm going to go to the go-to here. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. All right, so the Lord ain't putting these niggas to death to right away. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So they continue to do wickedness, continue to do wickedness. Okay, building that iniquity, sin on top of sin. Okay, but the Lord has them reserved, all right, for a time of judgment. It says, though a sinner do an evil hundred times in his day be alone, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear Yahweh Shai, which fear before him. But it not it shall not be well with them, uh Salaki, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before the most high. Alright, a days as a shadow, coming and go. You know? Uh, that's really the point there. Uh, let me see. I wanted to get another point. Uh, 
Um, God, I believe that was it. Uh, it was one more I was thinking of. Uh, reserve. Con, I'll get this here. Second Peter is three and verse seven it says It says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So you're being reserved, man, for judgment. Okay, and that's more scary, man. The Lord is Reserving a, a special judgment for you? It's going to be brutal, man. Reserving a special judgment for the ungodly, man. We'll read that again. Second Peter 3 and 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And I'll end it with this. It'll be of the Lord's will. Um... I was just thinking of a scripture as I was reading that. Oh, yeah. Revelation 7. All right. The angel, angel is holding back the four winds. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 2, it says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads, man. All right, so everything is, is, is reserved until a special day, man, the day of judgment. So fret not. Don't be. Don't worry about these uh, uh, workers of iniquity. They, they may seem like they up now. All right, hey, but <laughs> a time to abound and a time to abase. These people are going to be abased real soon, man. All right, and Lord willing, we're, we are rejoicing. So with that, you know, Lord willing, this video is edifying. I'm going to close, give all praise, honor, and glory. Unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Racha, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, great millstone, peace and mercy. Unto the house of David, and to the next lesson, I say Shalom, and a Baba Ball. Shalom.